Greetings, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. May God's Holy Spirit be in this. May he empower it. May it be fruitful for his kingdom. I have a bunch of testimonies. First, let me introduce Dominic Spudo, the biggest persecuted Christian outreach, Lumen Life. He is helping, he lobbies against the for the United States to help these persecuted Christians, to bring attention, bring awareness. He helps them in Nigeria. He helps them in Pakistan. He helps them in China. He's amazing. And I'll get to his testimony, which is amazing. But first, why was I even at the church he was at? I go to another church for 10 years. I pray for about 40 people at that church. I love that church. That church is amazing. But the drug and alcohol counselor of that church, in my opinion, has made a huge mistake. He's preached another Jesus. He's preaching sorcery. He's on the border of preaching sorcery and not realizing it. I'm not going to say what his motivations are. He probably just doesn't understand what he's doing. But that's why I showed up at that other church. And the reason that I'm even bringing him up is because somebody I love a lot told me in one of those spiritual moments, you know how you get baptized and the Holy Spirit voice is a little louder and every once in a while the Holy Spirit makes you cry and you realize, oh my gosh, Lord, help. Well, it was one of those situations where this person said, I want to be sober like you. And I'm like, no problem. These little things you're on, they're nothing for God. God took me off all kinds of stuff over here, turned me into a writer who's published 77 books, 17 years worth of being sanctified, sanctifying surgery, purging me of everything that's hurting me. Now I'm a disciple of Jesus, help people recover. You can do this. I'll be here for you. It's, it's no problem. And I know what... What, what the underneath attack is. It's the enemy saying, you need this in fear and these little bondages. And I'm, I want to be there for that person. So I expected, hey, this is going to happen. This is no problem. I'll be here for him. And as happens often in addiction, the person changed their mind and then told me, hey, I think I need this one because I think even the pastors take this Adderall for ADHD because they've said that they have it. I have it. I've heard them say it too. God actually uses people with ADHD because you focus like a laser and you don't stop until you uncover a lot of stuff in there. And the Holy Spirit works with you when you're driving toward Jesus. And so I'm like, I don't think so, but who knows? I don't, I'm, I'm surprised sometimes. So I reached out to that person because I'm aggressive like that. And I said, what do you think about this Adderall? And this guy happens to have a persecuted outreach, helping people get clean water. And I hope I can remember to tell this story right, because it all kind of lines up together. And he says, Glenn, that's legal meth. I think it's legal meth. And I tell you to watch this documentary called Take Your Pills. It really explains it. I have a few friends that struggle with it. So he tells me this. I tell my friend that. And at that point, it's too late. The friend has already decided I need it. I'll deal with these other medications and get off them. But this one I really need. And so I'm like trying to tell that person, hey, that one that you're saying you really need is the one that's making you need all the other ones to, to come down. I know this business. I know that that pill, it's not as bad as real methamphetamine, but if you really look it up, it does the same thing to a lesser degree, whether it's as prescribed or not. It's stealing dopamine that God gave you. Your body stops producing dopamine. That is the chemical of enjoyment for accomplishment. So without it, you're depressed. So now you're no, not getting it naturally from God anymore because you're taking a pseudo, a fake thing. It's a vain philosophy and it makes you paranoid and causes heart problems. After 10 years, it can be damaging. Paranoia, it's anti-faith. So I was explaining all this to the drug counselor going like, what are you doing? Are you seriously like a drug counselor at church preaching like this? You should have told this person that there are other things you can do for that. And that this, you should have reached out to some experts like me. And here I am trying to help you. And you're still unwilling to even watch the documentary, take your pills to see that they're saying what I'm saying right now from a professional perspective. And they weigh up all of it. I mean, just watch the documentary. My gosh. And then tell the person, you know, that, that if you're getting high off it, you're dependent on it. It's an idol. You know, that's, that's what the Bible tells us to do. Just reach out, multitude of counselors. And so, 
I had to step away and I just started writing and writing and got on fire and, you know, God turned it into a glory. A lot of emotional pain, a lot of struggle, confusion. So I went to that other church and that's when I met Dominic Spudo. And so he, he has a life where he had addiction problems, pretty minor, but I mean, he said he was lost and he, uh, somebody brought the word to him, Jesus Christ. He received it. And what he saw in the word was Jesus is saying to help out the persecuted brothers. And that's how you're going to, that's how everybody's going to know about me. So here we are in rich Orange County, rich United States, spoiled, worried about LGBTQ, worried about gay marriage, worried about medical marijuana, all these other pills, worried about and doing yoga and then showing up and saying, Jesus, you have no rivals. While in Nigeria, people's heads are getting cut off. Um, daughters are being kidnapped and raped and sold into sex slavery. Wives watched their husband get their head cut off. That's the times we're in. This guy says it's a call to prayer. It's a call to giving and to let these people know that they're loved and pray for their faith. He says that, um, you know, think about it. And he says, pay attention to it because the more you pay attention to it, go to his, I'll put the links up to these things. The more you pay attention to it, the more you're going to um, get out of your own self and your own little problems are going to seem really small. And, and what they, what you want to do is you want to pray for their faith. You want to pray that God shows them their crown of glory. They're going to get as a martyr representing God, pray for the people persecuting them, that they're going to find Jesus through their witness. And so what the Bible tells us is when we go step in, step in with them and are willing to die with them, that witness is so strong. I mean, who would die for something if it was, wasn't real? That kind of love is how you bring people to Christ. That's real love. The definition of love, I think we've got that kind of confused. We will love an addict to death. We will love a homosexual to hell. We will love somebody who stays in drunkenness to hell, according to what the word says, that they don't inherit the kingdom of heaven. We, 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 we got it kind of twisted, you know what I mean? And so I want to bring up one situation here where uh, in Eurita, E-R-I-T-A, there's this lady, it made me cry, named Helen, and she, the Holy Spirit has gifted her to sing songs. And she is stuck in a metal container for like two years. And she's singing worship music. And she is preaching the gospel. And she's praying for her persecutors. And she's preaching to them. And they are whipping her and beating her and trying to kill her. And it makes her testimony even more. And that's what God wants us to do. Is he wants us to take his word seriously and look at it carefully. He does a really good job of explaining. He did a lot of research to show you that the giving that we're supposed to do in accordance with what the Bible says to do is like 60% to the persecuted Christians, to the ones. I'm reading Peter. I just did a book on Peter, and he's writing to the dispersed. And the dispersed are the homeless in caves, walking around mountains and stuff like that. And Peter's telling them to make sure of your call that you are going to heaven and then take the grace of Jesus that he would come die for you, that he would pay it all for you, that he would be our way back to heaven and take, take that grace and add to it your virtues, add to it your knowledge. And he says, go back into scripture, study the prophecies. He says, we're not following cleverly devised fables. We can go all the way back to the Psalms a thousand years before Jesus. We can go to Isaiah 700 years before Jesus. And we can see that Jesus Christ was predicted to come, step in, born through a virgin, born in Bethlehem, Micah 5, 2, that we know he's coming. He is the Messiah. We know who he is. And now we get to find out what he said to do. And what he said to do was go help the persecuted Christians and pray for, pray for Israel, pray for, pray for the persecuted Christians tithe to him, pray that the people persecuting come to the realization of Jesus Christ as Lord, bow a knee to him. So that's it for right now. You attack fear with faith, not with a pill. So that drug and alcohol counselor should, a year and a half later, watch the documentary, take your pills, and he should start preaching Jesus Christ and say, hey, does that medication get you high? Is it addictive for that? Are you dependent on it for that? Can you take a less dose? Are there other things you can do? Because it could be anti-faith. It could be pulling you away from Jesus. It could be 
confusing your Holy Spirit voice, it could be unfruitful because otherwise I want you to put a sign on your door that has the snake emblem on it that represents pharma, which is sorcery because you're preaching witchcraft and put psychiatry up there, put vain pursuits. And let's go to the book of James that says that's earthly, unspiritual and demonic. And then let's look at the, after the disciples, after Jesus is risen and they understand, whoa, he fulfills all of scripture and they all die for him. They all get tortured for us to have the word on a cross or cut, except for John. And what do they tell us? They tell us, be sober minded and watchful. Your enemy prowls around like a lion looking for who he can devour. He devours fear. He devours mindsets that are anti-faith and not a mindset of Christ. So you preach that. You preach that, hey, no, 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 no. You are of sound mind. That's what it says in Timothy. By, by our faith in Christ, you have a sound mind. You don't need all these medications. If you do, praise Jesus nonstop. Praise him day and night for what he did. Keep your mind on the word. And if you get into negative thought processes, call other people so that you can talk it out so you don't stay in those thought processes because those are dominions of the enemy. God bless you guys. Be encouraged. Be empowered. So we have two different persecuted Christian ministries involved in this. So I'm looking at it like that's God's will for me to walk through this salvation with fear and trembling and figure out how to deal with it so I don't, you know, hold in more than I can carry. There's been a lot of people that have come up to me and said, thank you, Glenn, for your boldness. Keep it up. Other pastors, other elders from other churches. So it's been, it's been a ride. It's been painful, but I trust God. God bless you.